All right, my friends, how are you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a fresh episode of the Premier League show. Uh, my friends, we're going to preview and predict match week 27 of this week. There's only eight games because obviously there's a big cup final taking place on Sunday. Talking about that cup final, on Friday I will be re releasing a one-off special, a Carabao Cup preview special. So do please check that out on Friday uh, if you're a fan of Man City or Chelsea or just a fan in general. I've put a lot of time, a lot of effort into it. I'm very happy with it, so please check it out. I'm trying to do some stuff that's a little bit different on the channel, so if you're a regular to the channel and to the Premier League show, please do go and visit some of the other content. Uh, you will not regret it. But my friends, we are going to crack on. There's no fan zone today. I just didn't have enough people leave their predictions in the last video, so please do remember in the comment section below to get your predictions in for the following match week so they can be included uh, in next week's fan zone. Uh, so let's get going, my friends. Match week 27 coming at you. So let's get cracking, my friends. Uh, you're going to see Friday games making their way onto the screen. The Premier League is doing it a little bit differently this week. Uh, two on a Friday, four on a su uh, Saturday, two on a Sunday. You'll see the two games on Friday. The first one we're going to talk about is, of course, taking place between West Ham United and Fulham. And it is a 7.45 kickoff live on Sky Sports, should you want to sit down and watch it, my friends. Uh, the last five Premier League meetings between these two teams resulted in three wins to West Ham and two wins to Fulham. The last meet was, of course, a very good 2-0 victory to the Hammers earlier on this season. Around Christmas time, I do believe it was, I was there in attendance. Um, West Ham coming to this game in need of a W, my friends. They really do need a victory. Only one win in their last five games. Uh, they have recorded back-to-back -back draws, though. A very good draw against Liverpool. A disappointing draw against Crystal Palace. Um, I think we can all agree. Somewhat got away with it in that fixture. Um, they've got a very good record, though, against Fulham in the Premier League. That is one thing they have in their corner. 12 wins to Fulham's four from a possible 21 games and uh, yeah but the big problem for West Ham at the moment I guess is converting chances they are creating chances um, but they're struggling to convert them I do think a striker overhaul is definitely going to be needed in the summer the other one is if we have a good first half we switch off in the second and vice versa if we have a bad first half we have a good second half we're not consistent and consistency has been one of the biggest problems for the Hammers and it's cost us some big big points this year um, Fulham coming to this one Another team in poor form at the moment in the Premier League. Um, and for me, far worse form than West Ham are at the moment. We've only... Um, you know with four losses and only one win in their last five games in the Premier League it's not very good um, a lot like West Ham they have trouble converting chances but another problem they've got on top though is they don't keep too many clean sheets only two clean sheets from this Premier League season and it kind of goes to show you why they've only got 17 points and why they're in the relegation places and talking of 17 points that's not a lot with only 11 games to go they're going to need to find some consistency and potentially have to win every single game uh, before the season's at if they want to be safe I think a couple more losses and we can really start talking about Fulham being relegated to the championship um, as far as this game is concerned Friday night under the lights at home for West Ham I'm sure the fans will be behind them I'm going to go with a home win a 3-1 to West Ham United uh, next we're going to talk about the other game taking place on Friday my friends and it is going to be taking place between Cardiff and Watford they've only ever met once before in the Premier League it was a 3-2 win uh, to Watford on the day uh, in the reverse fixture earlier this season um, Cardiff come into this one off the back of another solid win and a great win against Southampton. A win that actually see them leapfrog Southampton out of the relegation places and push the Saints in. Um, you know, they're out of the relegation zone. They're starting to build some form. Can they make this form go even further? Make it three wins in a row in the Premier League. I'm not sure they did that when they were in the league the last time around but Warnock's gone playing some good stuff he's got them fighting for every point and uh, they've been well worth their money recently uh, Watford come into this one in fine spirit it has to be said uh, half decent form you know uh, one loss in their last five and not only that um, they beat up their opposition um, and they are pushed through into the quarterfinal of the FA Cup and I do believe they've got a quarterfinal tie with Crystal Palace which should be a very intriguing one um, you know uh, that has to be put aside though back to league action back to trying to pick up points and back for trying to push for that seventh place they're in eighth they're, they're in you know they're, they're they're in the box seat if they want to push on and try and leapfrog walls who are going very well themselves but you know I think 
a seventh or an eighth place finish for Watford this season and, you know, a potential uh, quarter semi-final should they beat Crystal Palace. What a season that would be. And uh, he has done a solid, solid job this season, the manager of Watford. And as far as this game is concerned, I think it's going to be very, very tight. And both teams with them being in pretty decent form and Watford missing a couple of players. I just think the home... I think a home tie just kind of suits Cardiff in this one. Warnock will go for it. A narrow 1-0 win to Cardiff. Some may not agree, but I just think it, we're at the business end of the season now. And if you're going to stay up, these are the games where you go pick up the points. Um, next up, my friends, you're going to see the Saturday fixtures making their way onto the screen, my friends. There's only four taking place this week in the Premier League. And the first of those four, though, is Burnley versus Tottenham, a 12.30 kickoff, And it's live on Sky Sports for those that are interested. Uh, the last five meets between these two clubs in the league resulted in four wins to Tottenham, one draw. The last meet was a very narrow 1-0 victory to Spurs. Um, Burnley come into this one, another team coming into this in fine, fine form. Two wins, three draws from their last five in the Premier League and they've been picking up valuable points uh, from teams that are in and around them. Uh, I think we can all agree last time out they were slightly fortuitous to take all three points because had Brighton been given the penalty they deserved for Hendricks handball, um, they would have scored a goal and it could have changed the game. And the thing that was even more of a sucker blow and a sucker punch was that the, he handballed it, they counter-attacked over the end, got a penalty, 3-0 three, three I think it was at the time. It was, yeah, just luck was on their side. And when luck's on your side, the good things happen for you. But they are going very well, Burnley. They seem to have turned a corner. Sean Dyche is performing the miracles he was last year. I think that they are pretty much going to be safe this season. I, I don't see them dropping enough points between now and the end of the year to really be considered relegation fodder. Um, another week, another win for Tottenham Hotspur. I think we can all agree when Kane and Ali got injured, uh, the, the, you know, they probably feared the worst. Every Tottenham fan field feared the worst. They had a hard run of games, but they've been doing very, very well. Been picking up the points, been winning games, and they are still there or thereabouts. They're almost like the silent assassins, the ninjas creeping up on Manchester City and Liverpool, who are top of the table. Um, they're there, and they still have a chance of winning this league. Do I think they're going to do it? Definitely not. I think it's between City and Liverpool, but if they can keep winning games and keep picking up points, they still stand a chance. A lot of it has to go down to the efforts of Son. He has been sensational. He's one of the more underrated players in the league. And I do honestly believe that. I don't think he gets half the credit he deserves. He's now starting to get some of that credit because uh, Harry Kane is out and he's been having to do the job of the man. But he's been scoring goals. He's been flying about the football pitch, assisting. And they've just been sensational and well worth they're uh, well worth the money at the end of the day. And uh, they are, like I say, still in the hunt. And they're going to want to remain in the hunt by winning in this one. And I do think they stand a chance. I am going to go with an away win to Tottenham, a 2-1 to them on the day. Um, next, we're going to talk Bournemouth against Wolves, my friends. Uh, they've only met once before in the Premier League earlier this season. And it was a 2-0 win to Wolves on the day. Uh, after a great win against Chelsea a few weeks ago, Bournemouth have just gone backwards. Um, it was almost as if that was their two steps forward. And now they've gone five back. Suffered back-to-back -back defeats now and haven't scored a goal in their last two games either. Last time out, torn to shreds by Liverpool, uh, were well and truly beaten. Um, they'll need to find their shooting boots. Like I've already said, no goal in their last two games uh, and conceded, I believe, five goals in those two. Need to tighten up at the back. Need to find some shooting uh, boots again if they are to make uh, a go for it and hunt and hunt down that top half finish that you know they they well deserved earlier on in the season. Um, Wolves capped off a quite brilliant. Uh, you know, uh, run of form uh, by booking their self a quarter-final place as well. A good win um, in the FA Cup, and they now have the dream tie, a quarter-final against Manchester United, and one I'm sure they will absolutely love. And a lot were very critical of Wolves last time out, the fact they snatched that draw. Uh, people thought that Bolly had, uh, you know, fouled the goalkeeper. For me, the GK makes a, a, a terrible mistake. Bolly just makes the most of it. I think a lot of it is that Bolly's arms are all over the, the goalkeeper. But for a change, I thought it was quite nice to see it happen. The goalkeepers are protected far too much in football these days. And Bolly was well within his rights to challenge for the ball. And they took a 1-1. One, one. Um, but, you know, Wolves, they've got three wins, a draw from their last four games. And it's catapulted them into seventh. And I do believe there's a four-point gap between them and Watford now. And they're really starting to make that position their own. And what a story it would be if Wolves were to be newly promoted and finish seventh in the 
the league and potentially stand a chance of qualifying for Europe should the teams above them you win silverware and push those European qualification places down a hell of a season hell of a job by the manager and uh, you know I think they're going to be well well in this one and well up for it great first season for them in the Premier League as far as a result is concerned for this game I do think that Bournemouth are going to start to try and you know rein it in a little bit uh, Wolves away from home they've been okay but I am going to go with a 1-1 a score draw just can't separate them even though Bournemouth are not in the best run of form uh, we are going to talk Newcastle versus Huddersfield next my friends uh, they've met three times in the Premier League the last meet was a 1-0 win to Newcastle um, for me this game could have gone down as a six point. I had Huddersfield, uh, you know, been closer to remaining uh, in the league, but it's a bigger game for Newcastle now than it is Huddersfield. Um, you know, they need the points. They are still in danger of being relegated. I think they're level on points with a couple of other clubs down there. Uh, a disappointing draw for them, for really against uh, Wolves to throw it away the way that they did. Uh, a goalkeeping error. It wasn't great for them, and uh, it has just been a yo-yo season. It seems to be the one thing I've said about Newcastle all year long, but. You you know they'll find a stretch where they'll go through a good run of form then they'll tail off again and it's weird because you look at them and you think they're picking up more points than they have I think they've only got 24 points on the board and they're going to need a lot more should they want to stay in the Premier League next uh, for next year um, I find it really hard to talk about Huddersfield now um, you know no win in their last five four wins in a uh, sorry four losses in a row and only 11 points and they just look dead and buried they don't really look capable of doing much it's been a tough season for not only the team, but the fans of the Terriers. And uh, I think now they just got to play for pride and prepare for next season. They look as good as gone. And uh, it's going to be very, very difficult for them uh, for the remainder of the season. Uh, as far as this game's concerned, I'm going to go with a home win. Newcastle know the importance of it. A 2-0 to them on the day. Um, the last game to take place on Saturday, my friends, is uh, Leicester versus Crystal Palace. It's live on BT Sports, a 5.30 kickoff. If you're interested, um, the last five meets between uh, these two in the Premier League have resulted in one win to Leicester, three wins to Crystal Palace and a draw, and the last meet was a 1-0 to Palace. Didn't realise how good Palace's form was against uh, Leicester in recent history. Uh, Leicester, at this moment in time, are in a very, very poor form. Back-to-back -back losses and, you know, four losses as well in the... In, um, you know, from their last five games. Uh, they can't stop shipping goals and they're not, just not scoring enough at the other end. It just doesn't, you know, balance itself out, unfortunately. And F Powell's job was under threat earlier on in the season. I'm sure it is under threat still and all over again. And he is going to have to, you know, do a monumental job with the last 11 games that he has got this season if he is going to be there at the end and take him into next year. The one bonus to come out of their last meet uh, in the Premier League against Tottenham, though, was that Tillemans was excellent. I really did think he was a hell of a talent um, got around the midfield very very well created chances and was everywhere and if he can do that for the remainder of the season uh, it's only a matter of time before Leicester start winning football games again um, you know with a win and uh, two draws in the league um, you know in their last few games um, and a win in the FA Cup booking their place a quarter final spot um, you know things are looking up for Crystal Palace um, they've um, they've not had a lot would look at the table and think they've had a very, very bad season. I don't think they've had a terrible season. It's just they've either had defensive lapses or they've not been able to convert chances into goals. They've actually played very, very well for long, long stretches of the season. I think that the last game out against West Ham kind of sums up the story of their season in one game. They were very, very poor in the first half, but they came out in the second half and absolutely smashed West Ham all over the park, but only came away with a draw. 24 chances created in one half of football, but they only scored one goal and I think that just tells you everything you need to know about Crystal Palace if they can find themselves a goal scorer find themselves some consistency they would be so far better off this season um, they are by the looks of things going to be without Wilfred Baha uh, Zaha Baha who the hell is he um, <laughs> Zaha in the game uh, he is suspended he tried to appeal his uh, sending off the other week it didn't uh, didn't work so he is going to have to serve uh, a ban uh, as far as this game is concerned though Palace's form against Leicester in recent history is very very good Leicester just can't win to save their lives at the moment so I am going to go with an away win I'm going to go with a 2-1 to Crystal Palace 
on the day. And the last two games, my friends, we are going to talk about are taking place on Sunday. And uh, the last game we're going to talk about today is my game of the week. I should have mentioned that in the beginning. It's a massive game of the week. Um, not only where uh, this game is concerned, but where the whole you know landscape of the Premier League could be at the end of it. But the first one, my friends, to take place on Sunday is between Arsenal and Southampton. Uh, last five in the Premier League between these two teams resulted in three wins to Arsenal, one win to Southampton, and a draw thrown in there for good measure. The last meet was a 3-2 victory to um, Southampton. Um, Arsenal's first season under Emery for me, actually hasn't been that bad. Um, a few poor results and poor performances, and some Arsenal fans are declaring deja vu, like it's Arsene Wenger in disguise. Now, I said at the beginning of the season when I did my very, very early initial predictions... Um, that I said that this was going to be a rebuilding season, that Emery needed at least three or four transfer windows to get this team where he wants it, and that the Arsenal fans were going to need to be patient. A lot of Arsenal fans then commented on that video, attacked me and said, no, we'll finish top four, things are going to change, it's going to happen overnight. And lo and behold, it has happened exactly how I said it was happened. The Emery doesn't have the team that he wants, he doesn't have the players that he wants, and he just doesn't have the ability to get this team motivated enough for each and every game. The inconsistency Consistencies are still there with the defence. They've had injuries all season long. Problems off the pitch. The Ozil situation is laughable. 350 grand a week for a player that doesn't play. You know, Merson, uh, you know, joking about the manager trying to push him into retirement. It's just a farce. And Arsenal remain the banter club. And, you know, I have nothing against Arsenal. I have nothing against the fans. But they do make it hard for themselves, not only with the way the fans react in the press, but with the way the players uh, perform on the pitch and the way they go about their business. It's going to take time. Arsenal fans need to remain patient. Getting rid of Emery in the summer or next summer isn't going to achieve anything because you're just going to get another man in and he's going to want to do what he wants to do. He's going to get rid of some of the players Emery signed. He's going to sign the players he wants. That's how it works. Every manager has his philosophy and the ideal player. Uh, patience is what's needed. You You've not been that bad and you're still in with a chance, you know, of top six finish at the end of the day. That's a good season, in my opinion, for Arsenal. Um, Hassan Hall comes into this one with fond memories um, because at the end of the day, his first win for Southampton was against Arsenal in this reverse fixture earlier on in the season. Um, they dropped valuable points, though, against Cardiff. Uh, they really, really did. That's uh, That was a big six-pointer down the bottom of the table. As a result, they drop into the relegation places. Uh, disappointing draws before that against Burnley and Crystal Palace have them dragging their feet again and wondering whether or not they can remain in the league. I've been saying all season long, I really do believe that Southampton, when you look at that team on paper, is way too good to go down. But they carry on performing the way they do. They're definitely going to be, you know... Uh, um, relegation fodder and the teams around them just seem to want it a little bit more at the moment it's a massive game for them I think they'll approach it that way and they will try to attack this Arsenal uh, team the same way they did earlier on in the season um, with everything said I am still going to go with a home win a 2-1 to Arsenal uh, they need that victory and the last game we're going to talk about my friends is a massive one it's my game of the week and it is of course going to be taking place between Manchester United and Liverpool live on Sky Sports at 5 past 2 this game takes place before the big Carabao Cup final um, and it is a massive massive game and a good way to tickle the taste buds ready for that cup final. Last five meets between these two. Uh, one win to United, a win to Liverpool and three draws. The last meet was a 3-1 win to Liverpool earlier this season when Jose Mourinho was having a meltdown. Um, it's a huge derby, first and foremost, but it's a pivotal part of the season for Liverpool and could be a massive game that could decide the landscape of how the Premier League finishes that's my opinion of the situation. Now, a lot of people wondered what would happen to Manchester United when they eventually lost under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And he didn't disappoint, did he? Because he dispatched of uh, Chelsea in the FA Cup in some style, booking himself a quarter-final place. Uh, clearly, this team believe in him. Clearly, this uh, team believe in what he's trying to do. And you can see it from the performances of the players on the pitch, the way they fight for absolutely everything. Um, their form's been electric in the Premier League, still undefeated, uh, you know, under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. 
and it is slightly better than Liverpool's in that same time frame. Um, you know, they've looked harder to break down. They've got a lot of energy going forward. They're creating plenty of chances. You know, Martial and Lingard, rumour has it that they may or may not play in the game. I think Martial especially would be a massive miss in this game. He's been a revelation on a, on a Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Deserved his new contract and has been scoring and creating chances for fun. This team that Ole's got playing, I'm very intrigued to see how they um, approach this derby. Um, Mourinho went into these derbies with only one thing in mind and that was to park the bus. Try and grab a goal, park the bus and just try and grind it out. Oli has taken place in the derbies. Uh, I think secretly we all we all would agree that he's probably a bit of a Manchester United fan and he knows the importance of beating Liverpool. Will he go for it? How will he approach the game? It's going to be very, very interesting to see. As far as Liverpool are concerned, for a couple of weeks they stumbled back-to-back -back draws but last time out a very good win against Bournemouth and they looked back to their best in that game. I've got to give a massive shout out to Georgie Wijnaldum though. How good was he in that game? But also he is one of their he is one of their, you know, he's like the backing singer, isn't he, uh, for Liverpool. He's one of those very undervalued players that does absolutely everything in the midfield. He kind of, you know, carries from back to front. And he scores goals, creates chances, puts a foot in. He has been one of their shining stars of the season that not many people have talked about. A delightful chip against Bournemouth as well. It really was uh, a cheeky goal and I absolutely loved it. And, you know, he was a player when he joined Newcastle. West Ham went in for. I really wanted West Ham to sign him. Now look what he's doing, absolute bits in that Liverpool midfield. Um, they looked back to their attacking best, it has to be said, hitting Bournemouth on the counter-attack, scoring three very good goals. Could have been more, could have had five or six. Goal difference could be massive come the end of the season. They will probably be ruining those missed chances. Um, the pressure in this game is all on Liverpool. Um, they've got to try and treat this like any other game. Ignore the occasion, ignore who the opposition is. Go out there, do the business. If you have to win ugly, win ugly. Lose this game... And I do believe Manchester City are then in the box seat. They have to win this one if they stand any chance of winning the Premier League title, in my humblest of opinions. Do I think they're going to win it? No, because I think Oli is going to go for this because he understands the importance of the fixture. I don't think either team is going to win it. I think it's going to be a very, very exciting score draw. I am going with a 2-2 in the game. Do you agree with my predictions, my friends? Do let me know in the comment section below. Uh, I'll look forward to reading all of that. So there you have it, my friends. We are done and dusted for another week of the Premier League show. Uh, that's my preview and predictions for match week 27. Once again, my friends, in the comment section below, please leave me your predictions for match week 28 so I can bring Fan Zone back to you all next week. Uh, also, Friday, do keep an eye out for my Carabao Cup special. Uh, I've spent a lot of time on it. I think it's going to be a great little watch. And uh, for those that are City and Chelsea fans, you'll probably find it quite an interesting watch as well but i am done here my friends i wish all your teams the best of luck uh, during the course of the weekend there'll be two editions of the premier league show next week uh, we've got a midweek and a weekend so do look forward to double bubble of the premier league show next time but if you're new to the channel like share and subscribe that's appreciated by me but until next time you've been legends i'm saluting you all and i'll see you next time